It is Go Kit Challenge Day this time on KMRD Radio Stuff. We are just north of Dallas, Texas in some beautiful park. And here's Scott. We're going to get him on the, on the channel here. Hold that. He's hey, one Mike. of the founders. <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing here? What is this? I, I'm out judging right now, see, making sure guys' kits actually work. <laughs> nice. You want to tell us a little bit about this real quick? So, not only do we get guys to come out and bring out their go kits once a year as part of the challenge is to build a kit, we actually want to see them work. So, yeah. my job right now is to walk around and actually look and see, can you make two contacts for me? Uh -huh. Which you did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> we got one that did one, there was two down there, and on the far end you got two. So nice. Um, we're just trying to get that part checked off for them as quickly yeah. as they can. And yeah, I mean, we got a good turnout here today. Yeah, this Real is awesome. Real good turnout. There's a lot of guys here. Um, I didn't get up to look at the mobile vehicles yet, but that's that's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah I'm itching <laughs> to get out there too. So tell, how did this all start? You know, <sighs> Kelly and I, had this real itch to see what a go kit looked like. <laughs> and um, we just kind of, well, how can we get a bunch of guys to show up and show us what their kits look like? I know, let's make a competition. Yeah. So we made a competition and we're in our fourth year of it That's now. That's great. But yeah, he built a kit this year. I've got a kit, unfortunately, its battery got wiped out by the heater in the first oh, hour. Oh, no. So yeah, it's not, and I wasn't entering it, but it's yeah. up there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the big thing as well as we got a lot of guys that are coming out today that, you know, haven't got a lot of radio experience or uh -huh. haven't got a kit. Yeah. They're coming out and getting ideas, looking, seeing other guys use theirs. And I mean, this is a way of growing guys having kits that are functional and operational. Yeah. Awesome. So well, very good. Thanks for putting this on, man. This hey, is awesome. Thanks, Mike. Thanks <laughs> for coming. Appreciate it. This is so cool. There's there's so many guys here. You can look out on the lawn here. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight stations all out here. And then there's a bunch more under this pavilion. So let's, uh, let's go look at some boxes. All right, let's see what we got going on here. We got, uh, we got something, we got antennas in the air. Yep. Have a microphone. Hey, hey thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Name and call sign, please. Tom Bowles, Kilo India 5, Yankee Golf Tango. So what do you got here? I've got to uh, try to pack as many bands and modes into a backpack as I could. Oh, very good. Got the uh, FT818. Yep. Uh, little Evolve laptop. It all runs oh, yeah. on 12 volts. Yep. Uh, I've got my little uh, K6 ARK uh, paddles oh, here. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Adam. Yep. Nice. Yep. I love those. Those are great. Yeah. Well, you know, his all his prints are top notch. But yeah. Anyway, I've got um, VHF, UHF up to 40 meters. I also got his antenna here, too. Oh so, yeah, right on. That yep. is that yeah. is that. I put right a counterpoise on it. Nice. And um, yeah, so I can run all digital, all you know, CW, sideband. Yep. All that. That's great. And it all packs into a little backpack, eh? It packs into this backpack right here. Yeah. Okay. Also got my little QRP Labs kit. Yeah, brought it out here oh, today. Cool. So. Jeez. The whole kit fits here. That's antenna, awesome. battery, everything. So. Very cool. That's a pretty neat little radio. But, right on, man. Hey, thanks so much. What are you running for antennas here? So I got a uh, N9TAX Labs for VHF, UHF, uh, two meters and 70 centimeters. Okay. And then you and, got, uh, you said the K6ARK is your... Uh... K6ARK up to 40 meters. I got the little, uh, got a little, uh, what do you call that? The uh... the induction thingy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it'll, it'll do well on 40, 20, and... Uh, 15 and 10 are a little iffy, but yeah. uh, they're not too bad. Good. Yeah, I got a little uh, crappie pole here, too. That's what that is. Oh, yeah. Right on. Cool, yeah. man. Well, thanks for sharing your station. Appreciate hey, it. Thanks so much. All right. I'm next in line, so let's take a look at my station. This is nothing y'all haven't seen before, but I got my G90 Go Box out here that I built this uh, several years ago. It's kind of a, a uh, Go Box slash solar generator i got a six amp hour bio anno in here i got a little star a uh, little solar charge controller so you can plug solar into this top left port and uh this meter monitors the solar input this meter monitors uh the current that i'm using got a usb here got a little uh digi rig so i can do uh like ft8 and stuff on the little 60 dollar computer there and you know that's my setup antenna i'm just using the uh the old 
pack ten on the ground and then up into the tree with the pack ten a mast in the old KMRD leaning into a tree fashion. Let's see what we have over here. Look at this. We got a we got a satellite antenna. We got a buddy stick pro here. We got a guy that looks like a ham. Let's see what we got here. We got an 897 in here and some uh, power power poles and USBs and signal link. I got a 30 amp uh, power supply in there. That's pretty neat. Look at look at the look at the back here. That's the the star of this show here. Look at look at the wiring job in here. Absolutely beautiful. He's got the power gate there and a rig runner. And you've got, is that a little two meter antenna you got on there? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I made a contact on this today. Did you really? Get three <laughs> That's sweet. What do you got? What is this? It's an 891. Uh, but this this stuff here, what is it? My power pack, it all fits in this range bag. Okay. Nice. Uh, solar, solar controller. Okay. Tuner. Neat. Very, very cool. Nice. Yeah, I love that. That is too cool. <laughs> so is this where is the the 897 does VH? Oh, VHF8. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Okay. Very cool. That's a, that's a very nice kit. What is this here? Lights. Really? Okay. Little rack lights. I see. Yeah, you can't really see them out here, but. Okay. That's too cool. Okay. Nice. Yep. Cool, cool. Very nice job. Look at this guy. Here's Frank. What do you got here? Me? I just have my Lonesome Poda kit. Yeah. Show us um, what you got here. So I have the Yezu DX10. Uh huh. And then. Um, that fits into the Giga Parts backpack I have um, filleted yep. out for everyone to check out. Uh -huh. um, I have my throw rope, so when I don't want to bring the mass or I go on my hiking mm -hmm. trips, um, I don't want to lighten the pack up, I have the throw rope and I can throw it up into the tree. Yep. Um, everything except the battery fits into the Giga Parts bag. Uh -huh. And um, and I have gone on hikes for three, four, five miles with this, and have been been fine. Of course, with the um, <laughs> the G90 and not the Yezu. Yeah. yeah. And what are you running for an antenna? The antenna is the K6 ARK uh, nine to one spark plug antenna. Nice. He uh, beefed it up a little bit for me so I can run FTA on 20 watts. Okay. With the G90. Nice. Or a hundred watts sideband with the Yezu. And now, how do you you have this deployed in a in a Rather peculiar way. Peculiar. Yeah. Peculiar how? What do you? What do you? What show us? What you're using here? So I have your. Um, what are you calling this thing? The trilam. Trilam. Yeah, yep. I have your trilam. Your trilam is holding out the um, base to my antenna here yep. off the ground just enough, and it's pulling the wire tight. So. Yep. I have a taut, a taut antenna. Very good. Totally not what I what I designed that for, but it's working. Hey, that's that's what we are hams. <laughs> DYI right. will figure it out. or repurpose anything that we can find off the shelf. Yeah, buddy, cool, but cool. But this was my old system, and this guy works great. I just yeah. same thing. I just take this up and I clip it with the clothespin. Uh huh. But when I unpack the car to go somewhere else, this guy gets taken out, and it takes me four porta trips to remember to put it back in the car. <laughs> Your system really cuts this in threes. Yep. And fits in the bag. It do. So a couple of tweaks for me, but we'll talk about those later. But yep. I, I love it. I love it. Good. Man. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. Thank you. Name and call sign, sir. My uh, name is Frank. Call sign is KG5ZNJ. And uh, what I have today is I have uh, a kit that I've put together over two years. Uh, it all fits in a backpack. Nice. And I have it under 30 pounds, which okay. is my goal because I can hike a couple of miles with it, no problem. Yeah. And uh, I'll, sh I'll give you a quick little guided take tour. A, take a look here. We have uh, a shelter tarp around. Um, that I can do about five or six different designs. Today this I, opened, cool. I opened it up so people could see it. And it has a table, it has a chair, 
Uh, it can do sideband. It can do. Uh, today I was doing some FT8. It can do any digital uh -huh. mode. Oh look, the sixty dollar laptop. Yeah, fifty dollar <laughs> laptop. It works. I got my. Today we have to do two contacts minimum. Yep. So I got mine in right away, and I, I just shut down to let the other guys transmit. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's uh, a bit of QRM earlier. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. So, so I got mine so in, and uh, everything all fits in that backpack. That bag there, including the antenna system. So right? your your tent, your table, yeah, your chair here. These boxes, everything yeah, fits in that bag, huh? but Those are for the radios and the SWR meter. Okay. So I want it so that I'm slowly building it. It's almost there. It's about 90% there. Uh huh. That it's fully waterproof, that it could go underwater. So that wow. to do islands on the air, I want it so that if I got off a boat and waded in, if I fell, uh -huh. it's not game over and I got yeah. all, you know, I got all these radios to replace, right? <laughs> that would be bad. So that, that's the idea. Um, the heat, finally, funny enough, is uh, oh. I have it upside down, but it's a sterno can. I just uh -huh. put it out because uh, you don't really need it anymore, but it's yeah. reflective and uh, I can cinch this down almost like a dome. Oh, okay, uh, for really? For field day, and that'll keep me warm all night. I've done winter field days really? uh, with this. Okay, oh, so yeah. yeah, I see how this is like a silver metallic kind yeah. of. Yeah, so okay. you can you can do all, and normally I, I also wouldn't come in with uh, these poles uh -huh. and that particular antenna, but because we're in open field today, uh, you know, you adapt to it, it's modular. Yeah. Normally, I use a tree and I can make shelters with this, with just a tree and some paracord. Uh -huh. So I save uh, space and weight. Yeah. And I use a chameleon wire antenna, a sloper, end fed uh -huh. sloper. Uh, this guy, this is what I use if I have flat ground. Yeah. And uh, I'll share a few tips with it. Uh, it's a Wolf River coils, they're heavy duty model, so it could do over 100 watts. Yeah. Uh, this is a chameleon whip, it's a much better antenna than what comes with the Wolf River. Okay. Uh, so you, you definitely, today my SWR was uh, not even 1.1. Wow. And uh, the best trick I have, one of the best tricks is um, I use aluminum tent poles with a hook on them. Yep. And the whole secret is to plant it at an angle perpendicular. Sure. Yep. And uh, that way this isn't gonna fall today. Yeah, even it's a little windy out. We have some wind. Yeah. Uh, but these things are light as a feather. I've tried many different ways to try to get this not to fall that is by far the the best thing that's ever worked for me in the yeah. field i've been on lake grapevine 30 miles an hour it's not uh -huh. falling cool so it's uh i've tried everything every possible thing with paracord and yeah using two stakes and uh this this has worked for me really well nice cool well thanks for sharing so, your yeah. setup so that's Appreciate the setup. It. yeah anytime right on so what do we got here well my name is coleman calling calls ko5z nice to meet you and what I have here is a Yaesu 857D uh -huh. uh, wired up for uh, mobile and portable. Okay. Now set up in the portable configuration. Yep. Um, oh my gosh, hang on. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> have radio wheel travel. Yeah, buddy. So, t so what do we have here? It's, it's a Yaesu 857. Yep. Uh, I can run off of commercial AC power. Okay. Or run off a of DC, which one I run off my battery pack right now. Mm -hmm. Have a DC out if you need to run another mobile or anything. Uh -huh. You can charge your cell phone if you need to. Yep. I have a, what they call a it's called a buck circuit. Uh -huh. To I turn it on and power my my laptop. Okay. Off this configuration. Yep. I got 160 through 440. Um, yeah, that's if I had, great. If I had this completely hooked up, I can flip this switch and send the signal from the antenna to the RTF, oh, wow. SDR dongle, which gives me a pan adapter on my laptop, which is running Windows. Get out of here. And if, cool. you're in, and if you're in low light conditions like in the evening and you, you can't see the radio, yeah. I have I have lights down here. Oh, I see, yeah, okay. Can I change the color? Look at that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, then sunlight, it doesn't. There, there you go, now it's red. Whatever color you want. Yeah, it's not showing up, it's too bright, but yeah, that's awesome. Very nice. And it all fits in that little box. And what, what do you have uh, for battery in here, or are you running separate? I'm running three lead acid batteries down in the okay. uh, uh, so here he's got battery the box. Battery it's, box it's, there. It's, and there's a solar panel that's charging the, the batteries. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right. He's self-contained, and, and these are your antennas. Yes, sir. The black one is an ATAS. Yep. Uh, 
two meter to 40 meters, and the yep. other one is a two meter 440 dual band. Nice. A couple, uh, you got the uh, speaker wire uh, counterpoise there. Oh, you're running the sky hook. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, those were, those work great, don't they? Oh, yes. Very cool. Very cool. And what is what kind of mast is this? Where'd you pick this up? Well, that is actually a uh, work light mast. Oh, okay. That was a Father's Day gift to me back many years ago. Yeah. And I just do, do a purpose to things. Yeah, buddy. I love you it. You know, hams are notorious for being frugal. <laughs> so most of everything I have is stuff that I just repurposed. Yeah. For the most part. That's great, man. Well, thanks for sharing your station. You're welcome. Yeah, Name uh, and call sign, sir. Name's Roger Carver. Call sign to AE5EZ. Roger, Roger, Roger. Uh, we got uh, a voting booth that a friend of mine gave me. I thought it'd is be, that what this is? Yeah, it's an old, old uh, voting booth. Uh, <laughs> thought it'd be cool for demos and for field day and things like that. I love that. Pretty handy. Um, you know, it all uh, the legs and everything fold up, fit inside these uh, rails here. And, okay. Uh, you know, these fold in, and you know, it's just a suitcase kind of. Yeah. Looks like a big suitcase. That is too funny. So what do you got? You got, got a QYT, 8900. Uh, oh, okay. Yep, yep. UHF, VHF. Okay. Uh, I'm running that off of the Milwaukee battery today. Uh, okay. Normally I run everything off that uh, 12 volt. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, if if the 12 volt goes dead for some reason, you got a, a Milwaukee battery, then you can just slap it in there and, and continue to operate. Yep. So that's, is that a 12 volt Milwaukee? No, that's an 18 volt. I got a down converter on on the right oh, side there. Oh, I see. There. There's your buck buck, converter. Yep. Little power stream buck converter. No kidding. Um, so that that That's little slick. that little radio is pretty cool. Little radio, it uh, uh, it'll monitor four channels, and if anything picks up, you know, switch to that channel. Okay. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. And then I'm what do scanning. you got? Some keys down here. I uh, got a couple of keys. Uh, you know, a guy across the way gave me this one. This is really you know, weighs about ten grams. Yeah. yeah. I think super lightweight. Yep. Works really well. Is and that I, the K six ARK? No, he printed it. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say that's the K6 ARK key. That's the second one. Maybe I, I, yeah. I don't know the I don't know the, the designer of it. And then this is it's just a little stainless steel uh, mag mag mount key. Okay. Uh, don't even know the brand of it, but it's pretty <laughs> nice. Fifty nice. or sixty bucks. So. Okay. Very cool. And so, then you got a what is this a CB over here? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. This is the real station here. Yeah. yeah. This my, my, my Midland uh, <laughs> Crystal Radio, uh, th uh, three band Crystal Radio. Wow. That is too cool. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for sharing well, thank your station. You. Appreciate it. What we got here? Oh, look at that. Just got a, is that, is that the Yesu, uh, you doing 10 meter FM right now? Look at that. He's got some ham sticks up there. Yeah, the 8900. Nice. Oh yeah, 29620. Very cool, very cool. Have you made any contacts yet? Yeah, I already did my contacts. Oh, cool. Then, then 10 meters, I started getting some people talking on it. Nice. So. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Dude, 10 is, 10 is on fire. I made my first 10 meter FM contact uh, a week or so ago. Uh, it's I awesome. Did, I did as well. I got, got the antenna tuned yeah. up and the guy out of Maryland was, was calling out, so I called back to him. Yeah. That's sweet. Cool, man. We'll keep at it. Thanks a lot. So many. What's going on, boys? What do we got going on here? I've got a couple boxes going on here. Yeah? Let me show you the front side. It's a little more entertaining. Here, so, hold that. All right. So I'm Andrew, KE5GDB. And this first box here is a D710 kit. Um, inside the box, I've got a, a 35 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. Mm -hmm. um, I bring all the connect connections out up front here. So Keystone jacks. Uh, I've got the, the B or TN... Uh, Type N bulkhead. Okay. Power switch to turn it all off and on. USB uh -huh. charger, and uh, power poles brought up there to charge it. Yeah. Um, this is designed so it can sit under the desk. You know, public okay. service events and stuff. You don't want a big old Pelican case occupying all your table space. Yeah. It's always a high commodity, so it's best to get that under the desk mm -hmm. and just keep the head unit handy. This next box is a dual band tracker and digi beater. So it can beacon position packets on VHF and UHF. Mm -hmm. It can digi packets from VHF to VHF or VHF to UHF. Mm -hmm. And if you've got internet, you can use the little hotel type router here to connect oh, wow. to a, a public Wi-Fi hotspot okay. and uh, move packets to the internet. Nice. The last box is new. And this, this is gonna serve as both an APRS tracker, digi peter, fox in a box you know we've mm -hmm. Denton County is big into fox hunting right now okay so this is gonna be a 50 watt fox or if you need to run a public service event without any other 
hoopla, mm. you can just use this as just a regular two meter radio. Nice. So. I noticed there's no antennas. I've got a little Slim Jim here. Oh, but, okay. Very good. But Very good. Typically, you know, I've got I've got some mic stands, tripods, okay. things like that. But yep. it's boring. You know, you, you've <laughs> seen antennas. I'm an antenna guy, so that's my, not boring to me. <laughs> my expertise is, is the, the radios and the yeah. electronics and soldering up these little modified, you know, sound cards yeah. to do the, the all-star and whatnot. Yeah. So Cool, man. Well, very anyway. nice setup. Thanks for sharing yeah. with us. Yeah, appreciate it. I'm not part of the competition this year. I but, don't care. But uh, Still got a box. So this box is uh, got the 7100 in it, the TMV71A, and then it's not powered on or hooked up right yeah. now. But uh, so in the back we've got a SDR play, and then the switch, uh, so I don't fry the SDR when uh -huh. I uh, key up the uh, HF. Yeah. And then uh, this is a 10.1 inch display that provides me with a pan adapter for okay. the 7100. There's a Raspberry Pi 4 behind that. Nice. Um, so these, uh, everything's internal to it and I don't have to worry about undoing anything to program the radios or to modify anything in there because the USB cords are sticking up out of there and mm -hmm. I can connect it to a laptop. Yeah. Uh, this other box, I just brought it because it was a cheap build. Everything's handled through the microphone. Oh yeah. Um, it's actually a tri-VFO, only the third VFO can only do simplex it's okay. not uh you can't code it where i can program the other two mm -hmm. for everything but uh this radio is called an any sec u yep and there's a 20 amp hour battery uh, oh geez it. you can go for days with that oh yeah <laughs> I, I was one of the lucky ones where uh the they're rated at 25 watts uh -huh. um and there's one guy here that is only getting 14 out of his another guy was getting 18. Uh -huh. i plugged it in i got 25 right out of the back oh, wow. so nice i was happy with that this, this other radio so this is my latest build this is the icom 706 mark 2g yeah. so all band all mode there is uh, that same battery I was talking about. There's one in the bottom of this, a 20 amp okay. hour battery, just just to use if you need it. Obviously HF, I'm not going to get much mileage out of that if I was running at 100 watts. Mm -hmm. But VHF, UHF, it'll give me ample amount. I've got an epic power gate in the back. Okay. So it, it's back here to yeah. connect into the power uh, via ground power uh -huh. or battery or solar. Yeah. And on this side. Oh. Obviously, I've got the uh, power switches. They're reverse of what most people think they are. They're not on right now. They are okay. off. I have the meter. So, mm -hmm. and then you can charge off a USB there. Mm -hmm. And then down below that is the solar connection. Okay. And then for ground power, it's back here. It's a oh geez, three prong boy. connector. Yep. So. Uh, this one weighs, that weighs 23.8 pounds. Uh -huh. This weighs 16.6 .6 pounds. Okay. That's not terrible. And that was last year's winner. Nice. I didn't bring out the previous year's winner. I left it at home. It's a little <laughs> bit heavy. You got you to gotta share the love, you know. Let's, yeah, so this You can't year, win it every year. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing, man. You bet. Look, at this is the way to do it right here. You get a, you get a wagon and a mag mount and a ham stick. What was the, I mean, that's, that's engineering at its finest right there. Well, it was at five o'clock yesterday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on here? Uh, well, I'm not seeing that radio. That's a FT-100. Uh-huh. And what do you got uh, for your battery here? 15, 20 years old. <laughs> that's all right. It's in a box and you're out here playing radio. That's all that matters. Does all modes? Yeah. Uh, two meters, 440, all HF. Nice. So it, uh, it, it does the thing. Yeah. Cool, man. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks. Bet. Let's see what we got going on over here. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, good. Good. What what kind of setup do we have here? So we've got uh, two racks. I started with the 891 <laughs> about two and a half years ago. Okay. Um, and so that was the first um, version, and then I had an FT2600 uh -huh. in there for VHF, but I never used it that much. Yeah. And so I wanted to start backpacking it, so I went this route yeah. with a FT991, which has the internal tuner, uh -huh. um, integrated VHF, UHF radio, or yep. FM, um, 20 amp hour uh, LiPo 4 battery. Okay. With, uh, 
with a Renogy uh, charge controller. Okay. And then uh, I have a, a solar panel connection in the front. Okay. I could recharge it if I need to. Mm -hmm. And uh, this all fits in that backpack. This one here or this yeah. one? That one there. Okay. So it nice. weighs about 24 and a half pounds. Okay. And Very cool. What did you make this out of? What kind of, what are these rails? Okay, so these rails, I think they use these in um, uh, making 3D printers. It's called 2020 ah. Extrusion. And uh, so I, I, I used some of this stuff for a, a work project and I had some left over. Okay. And I thought, you know, I, I want to I wanna frame to protect the radios, but yeah. I want them air cooled. And I, I didn't want to contain them in a box. And so that, yeah. that was the approach I took. That is really neat, man. And so this one now has handles. It was kind of an improvement over that. Okay. But it's um, nice. pretty easy. You set it on a table, hook up an antenna, and you're yep. ready to go. Yep. You no know, hooking anything else. All the wires are all integrated. Yeah. Yep. And then I control it with the PC with software that I wrote to control the radio. Really? Yeah. Okay. So uh, it'll control 891, 991, uh, DX10, and um, kind of working out the 710 uh -huh. right now. But, wow. So I have the GPS there. Software picks up the GPS readings, converts uh -huh. it to a six-digit grid, and then I can synchronize my PC clock if I'm out in the field and no those cell coverage. Ah, anymore. yes. Nice. Cool, man. Well, thanks for sharing. Right. Appreciate it. Got a couple mobile stations out here. Let's take a look. There's a chameleon in the wild right there. Just, you know, nice day at the park. What we got going on here, guys? Oh no, it's Mike. Just, just playing, uh, playing radio in the car here. Playing radio yeah, in the a, car or have a car in the radio? Yeah. Should Name I, and call sign, sir. How far should I be? It doesn't matter. Paul K five EOP. Nice. How's it going? Uh, not so bad. I was I was checking this out earlier. I mean, I love the yeah. So I, Raptor, I love everything about this already. It's Raptor liner, cheap, forgivable. I okay. see flaws. But that's okay, I'll let it go since yeah. it's a 22-year-old vehicle. Nice. So you've got all kinds of antennas. I see the Chameleon, yep. is that the MCOM uh, 2? That's the hybrid. Okay. That's the hybrid mini, because it, it goes up to 500 watts SSB. Oh, wow. And you're, and running, so on that you're just one, running this off into 60 the... 60-foot wire. Okay. Uh, that's the Chameleon wire, because I like green, as you can tell. That wire is, is no joke, dude. It's awesome. That Chameleon wire is awesome. So that's the 60-footer, and I think when it's... Uh, and I got the choke. They sell these chokes too. That always brings my SWR yeah. down a little bit. Yeah. And I want to say the highest SWR was 40. It's like 3.1. Everything else is around two. Okay. I do. I do have a tuner in there for that that one. So that's for NVIS. Uh -huh. And I usually have that inverted V at the house when I do that. Okay. Um, and then the dual bander there yeah, for VHF, VHF, UHF. UHF. And then I use the ATAS. I think you have you on yours too, right? I do. I love that antenna. Yeah. I love that it tunes with the coax. It's yep. amazing. Because uh, I have the 891, so yep. it works perfect. And now show us what do you? Ha <laughs> and then I got <laughs> I've a never seen a setup. And like I this. got a vertical over there. Oh it's, yeah, we saw the, the chameleon over there. That's the chameleon micro. I think 250 uh -huh. max SSB. And then you got okay, so you got so, an antenna switch and. Yep, this is my first iter well second iteration. I added the antenna switch, the tuner, this year. Okay. And I put the head back here. I used to have it up front, but uh -huh. I never drive and get on HF. So so. Say, it's got to be hard to operate yeah. HF when you're driving if it's exactly. all the way back here. So I moved it all back here. <laughs> And this is sec the next iteration will be a steel bumper with a tire carrier. Okay. Once the tire gets out, I will redo the box and have radios on drawers. The battery will be in the oh, back. Oh, yeah. I'll have a tub with tow ropes and emergency gear uh -huh. and probably a pull-out camp stove with like yeah. a, a wash tub or something. Yeah. So I'm getting there. So I got 220. Uh, I forget the brand of that. What's that brand? I always forget the name of that one. I don't know. Don't ask me. It's your, uh, it's your setup. TYT? I don't okay. know. It's disconnected right now because our repeater's not up. Uh -huh. The 400 over there, the ASU 400 and the 891 okay. here. Yep. This antenna switch goes from the ATAS uh -huh. on the vehicle out to this spot right here. Okay. Now, last year, I just had this one thing. This year, I added this to put up. I got a mag loop I could put up to, you know, okay. listing or whatever, but... So I can switch here. I've got the inverter over here that's charged. It'll charge the laptop. Okay. Your phone if you want. Yeah. I don't normally use the laptop. I normally use a tablet, but my uh -huh. Android tablet's broken. And when I do that, I use this Wolfie. Okay. It's a lot smaller. It doesn't take up so much battery power and space. Yeah. But um, I just have FT8 up now just because it's visual and people can see it. Yeah. And then I just have the BioNO as a backup. Okay. 
but I've got two batteries in this system, so it works pretty good. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Sweet, so man. hopefully next year you'll be here and you'll see the hopefully my completed product. I wasn't well, going to bring it this year. That's that's on you to complete it. But yeah, I got to. <laughs> we're not going to have a radio build party and make it for me. No. Uh, when you say we, that depends on who you include. <laughs> but anyway, that's it's just a fun project, and that's what this is all yeah. about. I oh yeah. It. I wish I could get out like you guys do and do Poda more, but yeah. I'm just I'm too, I'm too busy to do it. Yeah. So. Uh, well, you got the setup, dude. You just pull into the park and get on the air, man. I did. I did Bob Sandlin east of here. Bob Sandlin about two hours. Okay. Uh, this about a year ago. Yeah. And I loved it. I love. I love getting out camping and, and doing yep. radio. I just. I'm just so busy with a variety of things. It's just hard to do. So yep. anyway. Right on. But yeah. That's All it. right, brother. Hey, thanks, thanks for, for sharing, man. Appreciate it. What's your? You have a YouTube channel, isn't it? Uh, Prep Ham Paul. Do some uh, food storage stuff. Just different ideas here and there. I don't do a lot of stuff. Just. Yeah. Just information I found. I just try to. Pass it on. There you go. So, Prep Ham Paul. Yep. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, man. I mean, you look like you, you could be cooking us ham radio and dinner. Yeah, this is my, <laughs> uh, my wife affectionately calls this my doomsday trailer. This is awesome. What do you, what do you, what have you done here? Well, here, have that. So, this started out as a, just a camper project. Yeah. And then it, uh, evolved into more than that uh -huh. when the power grid went down here a couple of years ago uh -huh. i i had this idea so i've got i've got a 200 amp hour battery wow yes you do and a 3, i'm a bit of a battery nerd here so and a, a 3000 <laughs> watt inverter uh-huh and it charges on both solar and i've got a 110 i can plug it in on the other side okay so that way i've got Two sources, and I've got a small generator. I don't bring, I didn't bring it with me, but yeah, I've got three sources to charge my my big battery. Uh huh. And I've I've run, I can run my refrigerator. I mean, yeah. three thousand watt inverter. Yeah. Runs quite and a lot. So, so what are you using this for? Is this just kind of like a mobile camper power <laughs> yeah, supply? Yeah, it started out as Noah just a, weather kind of thing. It just started out as building the camper. Yeah. I I I loved outdoors and camping. Yeah. A lot and. Uh, so I bought this, <coughs> I put the rack on it. Uh, yeah, what's what's this above us this here? This is a Smitty built Overland XL tent. I mean, this is, this is just freaking awesome, and, man. And so, yeah, it's I, it's a four season tent. I've slept through okay. some pretty wicked storms in it. Really? Uh, I, this this was a, a light tower, like the, the had a yeah. generator, so it has a yeah. big, big tall okay, light tower. Okay, I was wondering what you made this out of. And uh, so that's if if it's if I get really serious about it, I pull these out, and I got some trailer jacks I put on there, uh -huh. to stabilize the whole thing. Yeah, I took the the little dinky trailer tires <laughs> off and put something on there so it would roll down the highway a little better. Yeah, plumbed in some propane here. for a grill. That's great. And then this is all the control stuff. Put a, a fuse block for uh -huh. everything. I got a water pump. The inside here is 35 gallon water tank. Really? And uh, so th this runs a water pump and I got some lights. Uh -huh. and two other switches I haven't haven't uh, used up yet. This, yeah. is, this is the controller that I can put. I can hook that into the 110. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is very could, cool, man. Then you got a, a J pole I, I up built, here. Built me a homemade J pole. Yeah. Stuck it on there last That's night. Great, man. Neighbors wondered what I was doing out there at midnight <laughs> welding on, but they're not used to it by now. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> they still wonder. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I keep them keep them uh, wondering. Yeah. Very cool. Well, hey, thanks for sharing, man. This sure. is this is really neat. Sure. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's just like I said, it's an ongoing project. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I. I I, I spent the last little while. I isolated all the electrical circuits. Was inside. Nothing's touching uh -huh. the outside of the, of the box. Yeah. And I've got some lightning cable, lightning protection cable, and big ground rod, so I can ground it out. Nice. And it'll be, it'll be EMP resistant. Uh -huh. Oh, that's cool. I think. I, we'll I'm, no find out. I'm no electro. <laughs> Hopefully the Chinese don't try that out on right. us. But. Uh, uh, from what I've studied and what I've heard, that uh -huh. if I got that grounded out, and then eventually I'm, I'll, I'm 
gonna spray the whole thing down bed liner. And, yeah. Uh, like I said, it's just a... It's a never ending project. Never ending project. Heck yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Sure. Appreciate it. It's that time we're gonna announce the winners here. You ready to find out who the winners were? Yeah! The mobile entry. I'm gonna do the mobile entry. <laughs> oh, see, I'm messing Scott up already. <laughs> the mobile entry. K. Five, V O P, Paul. Come on down. Come on down. Don't trip over the tripods, man. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Would you like to make a speech? Speech. Speech. I'd like to thank all the little people. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, everybody. And uh, bring more mobiles next year. And uh, I'm hopefully going to be even better next year. I got some more ideas. It's not complete. So, but thanks everyone for voting. Appreciate it. Third place, Kilo Golf Five, Victor, Zulu <laughs> Quebec. Get a ham radio out like gift certificate. No. No, you get a plaque. <laughs> you get you get a piece All of plastic. Right. Second place, Kilo Golf Five, Zulu November Juliet. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Where's the drum roll and all of that stuff? The coveted cup. The cup! Who thinks they got the Hamburg cup? Woo! <laughs> Wrong. Who Wrong. thinks Frank Wrong. didn't get it? <laughs> Roger! Alpha Charlie 5, Echo, Zulu. You got first place. <laughs> See, you gotta have a voting booth. So, for those of you... I attributed it all to the voting booth. Y'all voted. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yours for a year. All right. What a great show this was. Thanks, Scott and Kelly, for putting this on. I hope to God this is even bigger next year. And we will see you next time on KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.